uh, is uh, Rajan Phillips. Rajan Phillips studied civil <coughs> engineering at the University of uh, Ceylon in Perpenya in Sri Lanka and urban planning and environmental studies at the University of Toronto and Waterloo in Canada. Uh, he's a professional engineer and has worked with many public and private sector agencies in Sri Lanka, Singapore, and since 1988 in Canada. He's been a freelance writer from his Perdenia University days, and his articles appear regularly in the print and electronic media. He has edited and published Fetch Shrift's Felicitating, sorry, Reverend Tani Nayagam and <coughs> Dr. Uh, Abhayavarthana. He was a founder member and secretary of the Movement for Interracial Justice and Equality, MERGE, and was the principal author of two MERGE documents, Emergency 79, and 1981, the year of racial violence. He also served on the board of directors of Saturday Review, Jaffna's English language weekly of the, eight, of the 1980s. And he now lives in Waterloo. Oh, thank you. Waterloo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're outside North America, Waterloo would mean something else. Uh, so thank you. Hopefully, most of you know Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> anyway, but the organizations that you refer to. Uh, Merge and the Saturday Review, the newspaper, they are all both defunct, you know, they happened so long ago, but uh, the problem is much worse than uh, what it was then at that time in Liberty, that Ahilan and others, uh, we are not really a different generation, but, uh, but a new, new wave of uh, activists and interested people who have come in and, and and nothing much has uh, happened there by way of a solution. Uh, to take off, I, I would try to kind of uh, fill in the gaps from my angle or perspective into what Rohini and Ahidan has been saying and also uh, cover off what I think is my assignment is to give a situate Sri Lanka in the context of South Asia. Uh, I think Ahilan has already touched that, but then we will have discussions and there will be others more informed about outside Sri Lanka in South Asia than personally myself. Or Rohini, she lives in India, she knows quite a bit about India and Indian elections. Uh, well, one thing that uh, uh, Rohini traced the development or the presence of the left movement in Sri Lanka at the time of independence, uh, its strengths and weaknesses, its achievement, especially in the first decade after independence, and its gradual decline and collapse. And if I heard her right, she, you know, there is a definite connection, uh, at least a correlation between the collapse of the left movement and the emergence of the Tamil nationalist movement in the way uh, we have been experiencing it for so many years. What I would like to add to that perspective or analysis is that there was another presence in Sri Lanka, another factor of force, that somewhat preordained the trajectory of the left, including its decline and, and collapse, and also the trajectory of the Tamil nationalist movement, meaning its rise and the deformation that it has gone through uh, in our time. And that force of factor is the state of Sri Lanka. Uh, to describe the state of Sri Lanka, I would momentarily go outside Sri Lanka to see, to put it in the context of South Asia. At the time of independence, when British left Ceylon at that time and British India, uh, Sri Lanka at that time was considered a modern colony. Uh, you know, there were high hopes uh, for Sri Lanka, especially the way British left uh, India and Pakistan in the creation of partition of British India, creation of East and West Pakistan, there's one, one country joined across vast territories of uh, the Indian subcontinent. In contrast to that, India, Sri Lanka was considered uh, a model colony. There was a veneer of unity, at least at the level of the middle classes who had come risen during the colonial period, and which were that encompassed in, in a very livable way, uh, the different ethnic coexistence of the island, the Sinhalese, the Tamils, the Muslims, and the plantation Tamils who, who, who arrived in the country during the British period, they were the group who were the real other, in, in contrast to the middle, middle class in Sri Lanka at that time. But 
I, I would like to add one other qualification. Uh, it may not be, it's difficult to say to what extent this would be applicable to other parts of South Asia, but in Sri Lanka, even now, the, the social and cultural relationships between Tamils, Sinhalese, and Muslims is, is infinitely better compared to their political relationships. <coughs> uh, there is no barrier to intermarriages. In fact, I am a Tamil, I could say I have more personal Sinhalese friends and even Sinhalese affines. Uh, and, and, and I'm not unique in that, and there are several others in, in all communities. Uh, but it's the political problem that has poisoned at times the, the, this relationship and then spills over. So the, my point here is that it shouldn't be too difficult if everyone tries hard to resolve these political problems. And why it happened, uh, the, the other aspect, okay, let, let me leave that aside for a moment. And, uh, the British colonial legacy in South Asia has been, has been somewhat disproportionate, in my view. I India has, not, not because of any, any cunning or any special design, but it so happened that India got the best of the British legacy. Uh, Sri Lanka inherited equally good in that sense. This is not to defend colonialism. Uh, but what they got and from where the, the direction that they could have taken uh, was equally good. But there were shortcomings which were not seen, but in hindsight we can, we can identify or diagnose. But unfortunately in Pakistan and Bangladesh, uh, the kind of legacies that they got from Britain government were skewed and to an extent preordained the, the trajectories that those countries have taken. In particular, if you look at the fundamentals of uh, the political order or political system, uh, we nowadays talk so much about economic fundamentals, but these are equally important, if not more. Uh, India inherited uh, a federalized system, not only in terms of governance and in, 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 in the organization of the state, but also in terms of its civil society and its political parties. The main Congress party, its, its chief, uh, um, not adversary, but its, its challenger, the, the left movement, they were all organized regionally and in, in, in a federated sense. And that was conducive and it contributed to India maintaining that balance without breaking apart. Whereas in Pakistan, according to at least some commentators, the, the state was skewed with the bureaucracy being dominated by Mohajis to, some, to an extent, and the Pakistani army, which was virtually the British army, being dominated by the Punjabi Muslims. And, and they, they even had the, uh, the, you know, they even made Urdu, which was only spoken by Muslim Mohajis, the official language, overriding Sindhs and all other regions of Pakistan. And they always had the constant problem with Bangladesh. And in Sri Lanka, even though on surface uh, things appear to be calm and it was a model colony, uh, and people used to talk about halcyon days at the, on, the, uh, on the morrow of independence, it was highly centralized. At that time it was not noticeable. But even the British constitutional uh, interventions going as far back as to 1950, 31, when the universal franchise was introduced into Sri Lanka, at that time, the Constitutional Commission that recommended changes in Sri Lanka detected this, the over-centralization and over-elitism of, of the governing structure. And they wanted to introduce certain features of federalism from that time. And there was also a very strong campaign then and later from sections of the Sinhalese who are in the in the interior part of the island, uh, the Kenyan Sinhalese, they wanted their own uh, union in, in a federation. They were ahead of the Tamils asking for a regional restructuring of state power. <coughs> the Tamil demand really came after. And so the, the army again, the military, it, it, it is very relevant to what's going on now. 
In India, the, the army, the civil service, the judiciary, they have been very representative of the, the Indian society, at least the region. And uh, I, I think it's fair to say that when the infamous march into into the Golden Temple occurred, I think the the head of the unit, I think, was a Sikh. Uh, yeah. Yes, and and in, in in Sri Lanka, the entire army, there is no virtually no Tamil presence in the army. 